folks, it's Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Let's talk about Garmin's newest action camera, the Verve 360. Uh, now this is really the first 360 action camera that kind of goes above and beyond the existing fray of 360 action cameras. Now there are, of course, tons of 360 degree action cameras out there today, which by the way is different than VR um, and different than 3D. It's, it's totally different. 360 just means you're shooting uh, basically the entire world around you. Um, VR is where you're interacting with that world. So in, in the case of a video camera like this, you're not really interacting with it. You're just along for the ride. Uh, and then 3D, of course, is different where things are like popping out at you. So just to, to clarify that, what we've seen up to this point is basically all the 360 action cameras out there today um, aren't really 4K or even anywhere near there. Uh, what happens instead is that you've got usually one lens, uh, which may be 4K in the case of something like the 360 Fly, which sits on top. And then it makes it so your actual end state picture is quite a bit crappier than the 4K you thought you were getting. Um, so that's what's unique about the Verb 360 is that's actually a 5.7K camera. And now 5.7K is two times 4K. And I know the math is a little funky, uh, but that's the way it goes from like a megapixel standpoint. So you might think that 8K would be two times 4K, but it's just not the way it works because you're expanding out the horizontal and the vertical plane. So multiplication means you get more out of that. It's a math thing. Okay, so what we've got here are two lenses. You see them on both sides. Uh, this is technically called the front lens and this is the back lens. Uh, they form a cohesive picture once they're stitched together. The camera will automatically stitch a 4K video for you. So when you use this lever right here to start recording, just like that, um, it's now stitching that video together in one picture so you can upload it straight to YouTube, no fancy injection or anything like that. If you've dealt with that in the past, uh, this is ready to go on the fly. Now in the default mode, they're gonna go ahead and get an exported 4K movie file that you can upload straight on the services like YouTube or Facebook or whatever you want, ready to go, pre-stitched, nothing else required. It's basically just drag and drop. Um, you can also use Garmin's Verb mobile edit app as well as the Verb edit on the desktop side to do a bunch of editing with that. And that's actually one of the strengths of this platform compared to most of the 360 cameras. If I look at something like the Nikon key mission or the Kodak cameras, one of the biggest downsides of those cameras is that the software that's accompanied with them is absolutely horrible. I mean, it's dismal, dismal bad. Um, like you wanted to shoot yourself, punch yourself in the balls, the whole thing, it's horrible. Um, I've tried, I bought all these cameras and they all suck. Verb edit is a whole different ball game better. Um, it's actually really impressive. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that in a minute. We'll come back to that. First, let's finish up though, some of the other basic functions on the camera. On the top here, we've got three buttons uh, that allow you to go through the menu system. So you can power on the camera, you can go into the menu and change the video mode. For example, you can change it from being video to time-lapse. There's actually four kind of core modes that you can set this in. One is the default 360 degree mode, which stitches everything together when it's all said and done. Two is to go ahead and use the front only lens, so kind of like a traditional action camera. Three is to use the back only lens, again, like a traditional action camera. And then four is raw mode, which will record these as two separate files um, that you can go ahead and download and stitch yourself using third party software. Most of that software is pretty expensive though, so I mean, there are some free options out there, but uh, the most expensive stuff is kind of the best stuff. Um, hopefully we'll see that price decrease over time, but that is something that you can do if you want to do a kind of a ProRes type thing. And that's where you get that 5.7K from, is by using those two files and merging that yourself. Uh, Garmin's Verb Edit Suite today does not support doing the uh, individual RAW files together after the fact. That is something they're looking at doing though, that way you can kind of offload that uh, from the camera onto you know, a laptop or something that's more powerful. And one of the reasons why Garmin isn't doing that in camera itself for the 5.7K at RAW is simply that it's just too much processing power. Um, this thing is actually pretty hot right now, uh, recording just RAW. And it's it's something that you really can't do in camera to be a record two by 4K and compress it um, into one single image. So this whole thing is waterproof. Uh, it's waterproof to 10 meters or 33 feet. And then you can access on the sides of this little door right there, the different ports. So you have right here a micro uh, USB port for charging as well as downloading and syncing onto your desktop computer. You've got a micro HDMI for display onto a TV screen of some sort. And then you have a micro SD card slot there for putting the actual storage itself. Uh, in my case, I went ahead and bought a 256 gig card, so a really darn big card, because I really don't wanna keep on swapping out cameras. Like if I go out for a day and just record a crap ton of footage, you can burn through a lot of gigs really, really quick when you're recording two by 4K streams in raw mode. Uh, so I just did that. Um, officially, they only support 128, but I haven't seen any problems in the last month using this this way, so FYI. 
Meanwhile, on the bottom here, so it comes with this little stand, by the way, in the box. Uh, you can see the picture right there of all the stuff that's in the box. So you've got this tripod here itself. You've got two different mounts. So one is a GoPro style mount that you see right there. So it connects to any GoPro mount. And then two on this one here is a tripod style mount. Uh, so that's also pretty cool because you can use that on a tripod like the one that's included. And this is great because it goes ahead and allows you to put this on here, twist it on just like that and then hold this up in front of you like this uh, to get those kind of cool 360 shots while you're doing something. In fact, if you check out my sample footage videos, um, you'll see some of that right there. And that's a good point. So I put together a bunch of sample Verb 360 footage uh, in separate videos that you can see up there or down in the description. Uh, they're not in this video because you can't on YouTube mix non 360 with 360 content, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, so you have to have that in a separate video. Um, I'll show you some of it at the end though on, it'll be complex, you'll see what I mean though. Uh, but if you wanna see the actual videos in 4K and all their glory, uh, then go ahead and check out those other links up there. Um, on the bottom though, we've got the battery pack door so you can pop this out. It's a changeable battery. Um, you're only getting about an hour and five minutes on this. It doesn't matter whether you're doing raw mode or uh, regular 4K stitched mode, it's an hour and five minutes, which by the way is about the same as it would be for most other uh, 4K capable action cameras from GoPro and Garmin today. They're in that ballpark. If you're doing 4K 30 with all the goods, that's really all you're getting. Um, speaking of goods, on the external side of it, you have four microphones. So you have one right there, the little set dots, two, three, and four right there. Um, this allows you to get spatially aware audio. So if I were to walk in a circle around this, you would actually hear the audio um, in your headphones or whatever you know surround sound system you're using, and you hear that moving all the way around you. It's just pretty darn cool. The other major claim to fame on the Verb lineup is the fact that this connects to sensors. Uh, so it connects to things like heart rate straps and cycling sensors, um, as well as even automotive sensors and boating sensors. So you can hook this up to your car and get things like uh, throttle and RPMs and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, um, and the same is true in cycling and running and lots and lots of sports. It also has a GPS with GLONASS built into it. It's got a barometric altimeter. It's got a gyroscope. It's got an accelerometer. And with some of those different features, what they're doing is they're actually making a gimbal out of it. Um, so in the software after the fact on the Verb Edit Suite, uh, either mobile or desktop, you can effectively gimbalize this and stabilize the entire thing internally. Now, unlike most stabilized footage that you would have had from like a GoPro Hero 5 Black or the Verb Ultra 30 last year, where it cropped the image, in this case, there's no cropping. It's simply using all that accelerometer and gyro data that has stored here on files. And then after the fact, it compensates for it. And it's really cool because you don't lose anything. It's just simply pretty and it's really stable and it's smooth and it's beautiful. Uh, you can see that in some of the footage in my sample footage there. Uh, really, really cool. So that way you don't have to worry about a gimbal. I can literally run down as you see in my sample footage with this mount like this, um, full out sprint and it looks perfectly smooth. So very, very cool stuff. Definitely kind of a neat thing and a unique thing um, to this compared to most 360 cameras. We're seeing that in a couple of other uh, sort of lesser known brands, but this is really the first major brand to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is walk you real quick through Verb Edit, since this is such an important part of uh, the entire Verb 360 piece here. Now I've just plugged in my camera and turned it on. So I've got this message up here that tells me that my camera is detected. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to import some clips. Um, now I did a really long video or photo time last night, so there's a lot of clips it wants to look at. Uh, but at this point, I basically go ahead and choose either to import all new clips or a certain selection of those clips. Uh, in my case, I've already got the clips imported in. I just kind of want to show you how this works. And the reason you want to do this is because it imports all the data metrics alongside of it. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my gallery instead though. And then these are the projects that I'm working on. You can see all my clips down below here. So these I've got different ones, uh, for example, this one with the car there, I've got the triathlon up here. Uh, I'm gonna crack open the triathlon one right now um, and then just kind of walk through some of the editing pieces in that. Uh, and this is something I'm working on at the moment. So I've got the source clips up here so you can see different ones. So I can go ahead and open up any of these different, different clips if I want to. Um, I can just double tap them there and it opens up a preview window like this. Uh, and I can move the image around and you see as I do that down the bottom there, I've got this little kind of radar thing that shows me which direction things are pointed at. Uh, so I can go like this and just keep on moving around. Right now it's at 4K, I can change it to 720 if my computer is having problems with that. Um, so that's sort of the basic source clips. And then down the bottom here I've got my timeline. Uh, so if I go ahead, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this or not, 
So this is a, a clip I'm working on. I got the music down on the very bottom under audio. Uh, and then what you want to do with most of these clips, though, is to basically uh, do them for about 10 seconds, I find. Um, that's because, you know, people want to be able to move around. Um, and otherwise, if, if you don't do that, then um, it's going to be really, really too short. Whereas, you know, traditional video, you probably do like max three seconds. Um, but that makes it too, too tough to do. So this is still a rough cut. I haven't actually finished editing this down entirely yet. Um, in any case, on the left-hand side, I can do editing, so things like trimming left and right. Uh, this isn't Final Cut or Premiere. It's not quite as robust as that. So um, if you're used to those programs, this may take you a bit longer in some cases versus if you're not used to those programs, you'll probably be a lot faster than this. Um, next, G Metrics. G -metrics. Uh, this is the templates and overlays. So if I were to go to, let's see, uh, let's see right here, I think. I can do a template overlay on this. I'm just gonna pick something random. It's not really super applicable to this particular scene. Uh, you can see as I did that there, on the right hand, I've got the different gauges, uh, and then I can select which gauge they are. I can delete gauges, so I can, for example, I can get rid of the, the Garmo logo, which is in here somewhere. Uh, there we go, goodbye, delete that. Um, I can go ahead and you know choose what goes in those gauges. Uh, so I can select, for example, that miles per hour gauge. Uh, let's see, there's recorded speed, and I can change that to be something else if I wanted to. Um, and you've got a lot of flexibility here. You can change the appearance of the gauge. Uh, you can tilt it, you can scale it, rotate it. Uh, the gauge itself you can go into. You can choose different data types of gauges. Um, I can choose the actual data, I can swap it out for other files, I can retime things. Uh, again, a lot of flexibility here itself. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of this right now because I don't want this on my video and I'll forget about it later on. Uh, so yep, get rid of that. Stabilization, super, super, super important. Um, what this does, this will stabilize your image using the gyro and accelerometer data. Uh, this is probably the most important piece about verb edit uh, that you wanna keep in mind. Um, so, you know, you wanna do this. It does not do that natively in the camera itself. Uh, it's just doing that here. You've also got the option to do compass locks. That basically keep the camera focused on the direction of travel. Um, and you can do vehicle overlays or mode overlays, which will go ahead and lock the gauges onto an object in your video. Uh, so that's really cool, like if you're driving somewhere and want to go ahead and lock those gauges onto the dashboard itself uh, so that no matter whatever the camera does it looks like it's actually locked onto the dashboard um, itself so those are kind of the basics of verb edit you've got transitions and you can they have some basic music here but honestly it's pretty horrible so i added my own music to it um, they've got uh, you can add titles on there and you can display a map overlay to see where you were uh, while this was going on so you can kind of narrow down things and time things better once you're done you hit this export button up here and you shoot this out and you're good to go um, Depending on your computer, this could take a long time. You can change the quality there, uh, low, medium, max, high, or custom. Uh, so you can change in the bit rate within that all the way up to there. So um, let's see if I go to the top, how, how big is that file gonna be? That's the max, so um, that's what I had it already at. Uh, so there you go, just a quick look at Verb Edit. This is the same on PC as Mac, uh, and there's also kind of a really skinny version of it or slim down version of it on the mobile phone. So let's talk briefly about competitors. Um, obviously GoPro's announced their GoPro Fusion 360 degree cam, which is a 5.2K capable camera. And they're saying that's gonna be available later on this year in limited quantities, whatever that means. So it sounds like they're like staging it for probably not gonna ship very much by you know Christmas. Um, that's 5.2K, this is 5.7K. Now my bet though is that GoPro is actually probably also gonna change their specs to 5.7K, which doesn't mean they're changing anything in the hardware. I think it's just a claim. I think they they went out, they announced something at the last minute, they rushed it out there, um, and that's what they aim for with 5.2K, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, and the reason for that is that at 5.7K, that's two by four K sensors, and that's what you would buy. Like GoPro is not buying like a 3.8-ish K sensor, um, so, or anything, like it just doesn't make sense. So my bet is by the end of the year that claim will be actually a 5.7k just like this to match it so that they can go ahead and say they have the same specs when i look at other 360 cameras like the 360 fly and the nikon key mission and um, samsung's and ricoh's i mean there's so many options out there the biggest thing is really the software. And right now, Garmin blows away everyone when it comes to software. Um, and if you've tried any of these other apps, you know this, uh, they're horrendous. This is just really, really good. And I think that's gonna be Garmin's probably biggest advantage going into GoPro, um, or competing against GoPro later on this year when they start shipping there. Uh, because GoPro software actually isn't that good on the desktop side for editing. Um, it's better on the, the mobile phone side, but they don't have the data overlay pieces that well um, compared to what Garmin has. And they've got a lot of work to catch up to be able to 
basically match the functionality of this. But of course, GoPro is GoPro, and they have to make excellent hardware. There are a lot of areas that the companies can certainly compete on. Uh, for example, I would love to see one of these two companies offload or offer the ability for you to offload uh, stitching to the cloud, especially for raw files. So if I'm talking 5.7K footage, I'd love to be able to push that up to you know Google or Amazon or Microsoft or something like that and have that processing done. Uh, there are some companies that do that today with Google Cloud, uh, but it's not something built into like a GoPro or a Garmin suite. I just want to be able to handle it from Verbetta and just simply say, here's my files, send them up, be done, and then have it beautifully stitched, like really, really good stitching, um, the best that cloud computing can buy, um, have the file given back to me and be good to go. So I think that kind of stuff would be cool to see. Nonetheless, it's great stuff. The resolution is really, really good if your computer and your bandwidth can't afford it. So with that, do not forget to check out my full in-depth review down at the bottom there. Uh, it makes this video look really, really short. Uh, I have tons and tons and tons of detail on how this camera works, all the quirks, all the good, the bad, the awesome. Uh, I've got lots more sample clips uh, somewhere on the screen there. Uh, do not forget to whack that like button as well as the subscribe button because there's of course plenty more sports technology goodness on the way. Have a good one.